Cristo ha resucitado, en verdad ha resucitado. Cristo tens you, ve haki tens you. Pe Christos af tomf, meth me af tomf. Si Cristo e nabuhe, toto, siga niga ai nabuhe. Christus smart vikvik style. Prozwiki smart vikvik style. Christus er upstanden, han er sanaligan upstanden. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to the church in the hallway live. Today is the 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo of 2020, the feast of St. Hilary of Arles, or in the East, St. Hilarius. Very good saint. Look him up online. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O God, make haste to deliver us. Make haste to help us, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then were we like unto them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with joy. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. Yea, the Lord hath done great things for us already, whereof we rejoice. Turn our captivity, O Lord, as the rivers in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that now goeth on his way weeping and beareth good seed shall doubtless come again with joy and bring his sheaves with them. Except the Lord build the house, their labor is but lost that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is but lost labor that ye haste to rise up early, and so take late rest, and eat the bread of carefulness. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children, and the fruit of the womb are an heritage and gift that cometh of the Lord. Like as the arrows in the hand of the giant, even so are the young children. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Blessed are all they that fear the Lord and walk in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labors of thine hands. O well is thee, and happy shalt thou be. Thy wife shall be as the fruitful vine upon the walls of thine house. Thy children like the olive branches round about thy table. Lo, thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord from out of Zion shall so bless thee that thou shalt see Jerusalem in prosperity all thy life long. Yea, that thou shalt see thy children's children in peace upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. These three psalms are read 
every day of the weekday and Saturday in the monastery. And it's fitting for this week for us because Mother's Day is coming up. So thank you, Mom. And thank you, mothers, for all that you do. Children are a blessing from the Lord. I know that firsthand. And uh, mothers are a blessing from the Lord as well. And so are fathers. So we're continuing on in Isaiah chapter 7. Excuse me, my allergies are, are here. No, it's not corona. <laughs> At least not yet. And so we're starting off in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 1. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, there came up Rezin, king of Syria, Syria and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, against Jerusalem to war against it, but they could not conquer it. Then it was reported to the house of David, saying, Syria's forces made an agreement with Ephraim. So his soul and the soul of his people were confounded, as a tree of the woods is shaken by the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out now to meet Ahaz, you and Sheer Jashub, your son, at the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool, on the highway to the fuller's field, and say to him, Guard yourself and be silent. Do not fear. Neither let your soul be disheartened because of these two stubs of smoking firebrands. For when my fierce anger is over, again I shall heal. The son of Syria and the son of Ramalia have plotted evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and talk with them. And let us turn them to our side and let us make the son of Tabal king of it. Thus says the Lord of hosts. This counsel shall not continue, nor shall it come to pass. But the head of Syria is Damascus. Nevertheless, in 65 years, the kingdom of Ephraim will cease being a people. Also, the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramalia's son. And if you do not believe this, neither will you understand it. Moreover, the Lord added this to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary the Lord also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey he shall eat before he knows to prefer evil or choose the good. For before the child knows good or evil, he refuses the evil to choose the good. Excuse me. <laughs> it's that time of year, people. And we are live. And the land you fear because of the presence of the two kings will be abandoned. But God will bring the king of Assyria upon you, your people and your father's house, days that have not yet come. From the days of Ephraim took away from Judah, the kings, the king of the Assyrians. And it shall come to pass in that day the Lord will whistle for the fly that rules over part of the river of Egypt and for the bee in the land of Assyria. All of them will come and rest in the ravines of the country, in the clefts of the rocks, in the caves, and every crevice and tree. In that day, the Lord will shave with a large and blood-drenched razor belonging to the king of Assyria beyond the river, the head and the hair of the legs, and will also remove the beard. It shall be in that day a man will rear a heifer and two sheep. So it shall be from the abundance of milk they give. Everyone left in the land will eat butter and honey. It shall happen in that day, wherever there could be a thousand vines worth a sh thousand shekels of silver, it will be a barren land with thorn plants. Men will enter there with bows and arrows, for, the, for all the land will be barren and with thorn plants. Every mountain shall certainly be plowed, and there shall be no fear there from barren land. 
and thorn plants, for it will be a pasture for sheep and a place for oxen to roam. Moreover, the Lord said to me, Take for yourself a large new book and write on it with a man's pen concerning making a swift plunder of spoils, for it is near at hand. Then make witnesses for me of faithful men, Uriah and Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. And the Lord said to me, Call his name quickly to spoil, swiftly plunder. For before the child shall know how to call for his father and mother, one shall take the power of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria in the presence of the king of Assyria. The Lord also added this for me to speak as well, saying, Because this people did not choose the water of Siloam that flows quietly, but chose resin, and Ramalia's son to be king over you. Therefore, behold, the Lord brings upon you the mighty and abundant water of the river, the king of the Assyrians and his glory. He shall come up over every ravine of yours and walk over all your walls and take away from Judah every man able to raise his head or accomplish anything. His encampment will fill the breath of your land, O God, with us. Know this, O Gentiles, and be defeated. Give ear, all you, to the very ends of the earth. Be defeated, although you are strong. For even if you should be strong again, you will be defeated again. Then, too, whatever counsel you take, the Lord will scatter it abroad. And whatever word you shall speak, it will not continue among you. For the Lord God is with us. And thus says the Lord, With a strong hand they rebel against the course of the way of this people, saying, that you should not say it is hard, for whatever this people says is hard, is hard. But do not be afraid of their terror, nor be troubled. Sanctify the Lord himself, and he shall be your fear. So if you trust in him, he shall be as a sanctuary for you, and you shall not come against him as a stumbling stone, nor as a rock of disaster. But the house of Jacob lies in wait with a snare, and those in Jerusalem with a trap. Therefore, many among them shall be powerless and fall and be broken. And men who are in safety shall draw near and be conquered. Then they who seal, seal the law so as not to learn it themselves shall be evident. But one who says, I shall wait for God, who turned his face away from the house of Jacob, and I will trust in him. Behold, I and the children God gave me. This will be for signs and wonders in the house of Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. So if they should say to you, seek those who call from the earth and are ventriloquists, who speak from the belly, should not a nation seek their God? Why do they seek the dead on behalf of the living? He gave the law to help them, so as not to speak such a word as this, concerning which word there are no gifts to offer with it. Thus a harsh famine will come upon you, and it shall be when you are hungry, you will be grieved and speak badly of your rulers and idols. Then they shall look up to heaven above and on the earth below and behold tribulation, distress, and darkness. There will be severe despair and darkness, so dark one cannot see, and the one who is in despair shall be perplexed but only for a time. By the way, the sea and the rest dwelling along the seacoast, upon you a light will shine. The multitude of the people whom you brought down in your joy, they shall also rejoice in your presence, as those who rejoice in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoils. For the yoke lying upon them and the rod upon their neck is taken away. For the Lord broke the rod of the exactors as in the days of Midian. For every robe and garment gathered by deceit, they shall repay with money, and they shall be willing to do this, even though they were burned with fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called the angel of great counsel. For I shall bring peace upon the rulers 
peace and health by him. Great shall be his government, and of his peace there is no end. His peace shall be upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order and establish it with righteousness and judgment from that time forward and unto yeah, who say in pride and arrogance of heart, the bricks fell, but let us hew stones and let us cut down all Mount Zion and scatter their enemies. The Syrians from the rising of the sun, the Greeks from the setting of the sun. And the but the people did not turn until they were struck, yet they did not seek the Lord. So the Lord took away head and tail from Israel, great and small, in one day. The elder and those who admire persons. This is the head. This people lead them astray, and they lead them astray so as not turned away. But his hand is still uplifted. For lawlessness burns like fire and like dry grass. It shall be consumed by fire, fire and burn in the thickets of the forest. It shall devour all the hills round about. And because of the Lord's wrath, the entire land is burned up, and the people are as fuel for the fire. No man will have mercy on his brother, but one shall turn aside to the right hand, for he shall be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand and not be satisfied. Every man shall eat. I, this less northern Syria, um, Egypt, and yet, you still see the hand of God's mercy, especially in these three chapters, because you have the nativity prophecies here in these three chapters. So, I challenge you to take it the way it's generally taken, that this is all judgment. That God's hand of judgment is still uplifted. But also to see the hand of his mercy um, in our Ash Wednesday services, in our Ash Wednesday services, did Facebook just die? Excuse me, everyone on YouTube. Hey, Facebook, anybody watching? What in the world? I believe we had a fuzz out. Let me see if I can fix this while we're live. And it looks like we have internet access, and YouTube is still streaming, but somehow Facebook, I guess I said something wrong. <laughs> so we shall continue on on YouTube, and we will wait for Facebook to come back up. And as for everyone that's on Discord, you will be watching the YouTube live feed, so you're with us. But I challenge you to, to look at this in a different way. And in wrath, remember mercy. This is what, what is spoken at our Ash Wednesday service, which is a penitential office, that we are praying that in wrath, remember mercy. And that's taken from the scriptures as well. And let's go, let's go from the beginning, back to chapter 7, and look at, and Facebook is still dead in the water. Hmm. Let me see something here. Event log. Let's see, can anyone see me? Since nobody really, my viewers tend to be very uh, passive. So I have to, <laughs> there we go. So let's look at chapter seven. So you have the king's, of Israel and the king of Syria coming out after Judah. And this is hurtful because Israel, they're brothers. I mean, they're brothers of Judah. And, and it says that the people were shaken by the wind. They were, they were confounded as a tree of the woods is shaken by the wind. But then he says to the king, don't worry about it. Notice where he meets the king. At the end of the act, it seems crazy, like all these qualifiers. At the end of the aqueduct, from the upper pool, 
on the highway to the fuller's field. Now, that might not make any sense to you, but a fuller is a is a launderer, someone who cleans clothing, and it's a pool. It's it's almost a signifies baptism. And in the the ancient church, they would actually baptize in flowing water. Now it might gather into a pool, but they would they would allow it to gather in and keep flowing, so that it's living water. Um, you'll see that in the Didache, the, the baptisms are done in quote living water. Okay, so my mother says, "You keep going out. We'll try to watch later." Let me type something to her. You may watch on YouTube. I may have, excuse me, everyone. Sometimes you just got to address an issue in mid-flight. You may have said something. Controversial on Facebook. <laughs> so, <laughs> who knows? Who knows these days? Everybody wants authoritative truth. Tonight I am proclaiming to you authoritative truth, the Word of God. As for the other authoritative truths, I don't know so much about that. So, God leads the king to basically a place where he is to become clean, a fuller's field where people are made clean, clothing is made clean. It's an aqueduct pool of living water. And Isaiah says to the king, guard yourself and be silent. Do not fear Neither let your soul be disheartened because of these two stubs of smoking firebrands. For when my fierce anger is over, again I shall heal. Guard yourself, means guard your heart, and be silent. The Lord in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. And that's what you got going on here. He's telling him to, he's basically standing in the place of John the Baptist in some sense here, and telling him to repent. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Literally, because again I shall heal, he says. And then he gives the prophecy. Let us go up again. He says, the son of Syria and the son of Ramali have plotted evil, but it shall not come to pass the this council should not continue nor shall it come to pass and it's, but he says that the assyrians will come and destroy both syria and israel and moreover the lord added this to ahaz saying ask a sign for yourself from the lord your god now this is an honest question to ahaz from um isaiah but Ahaz tries to be super spiritual. Oh, I'm not going to tempt the Lord my God. And Ahaz is not the greatest of kings in the world as far as following the Lord. And so it just shows the kind of person that he is. But God still gives a sign. But now it's not to Ahaz because Ahaz has pretty much rejected God. Because God was specifically asking him to ask for a sign. And he didn't. And when God tells us to do something, we should do it. And we shouldn't pretend and feign religious uh, sensibilities and try to be holier than God himself, like this man did. And we should do exactly what God tells us to do whenever he tells us to do it. So here now, house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary the Lord also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, the in the Hebrew, the word is Alma, which means unmarried woman. And if you have the Revised Standard Version, you'll see this, a young lady or a young woman or something to that effect. 
And when Jerome looked at this, St. Jerome translating his Latin, he says it's more a hidden virgin shut off from the occasional sight of men. In other words, a different kind of virgin, a different kind of young woman. And so the Greek word in the, in the Septuagint, now this is predates Jesus as well. The Septuagint is the Bible that a majority of the Jewish speaking world, because they were in, they were dispersed throughout the nations. This is what they read is what the apostles quoted from in, in their uh, epistles and gospels. And the, the Septuagint is Parthenos, which is Greek for virgin specifically, not just an unmarried woman, but uh, a woman who is not known a man, let's put it that way. And Emmanuel, of course, we know from our Christmas readings or Advent readings, it's Advent, not Christmas, um, God with us. So you're speaking about his divine nature. So keep that in mind, because when we get to the second nativity, Advent prophecy, which is in chapter 9, now we'll just jump to it. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Angel of Great Counsel. For I shall bring peace upon the rulers, peace and health by him. And great shall be his government, and of his peace there is no end. His peace shall be upon the throne of David, and over his kingdom to order and establish it with righteousness and judgment from that time forward and unto ages of ages. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. And so you have Jesus' divinity, God with us, and now you have his humanity, a child is born. And he will be the apostle of great counsel, the wonderful counselor, some other translations say, the angel of great counsel, the minister of great counsel. It, it, it goes all over the map with the translation of those three words. And peace will come through him. Peace and health will come by him. And his kingdom will have no end. And so you have a man who is also God, whose kingdom will have no end. Now, in between chapter 8, you have Isaiah's son. A little bit of a tricky wording here, but I think you can, adults can figure this out. Then I went to the prophetess. Now, the prophetess is Isaiah's wife, and he went to her. And she conceived and bore a son, and the Lord said to me, Call his name, quickly despoil, swiftly plunder. This, too, is a prophecy. This, too, is a sign. The near sign and prophecy is that Syria and Israel would soon be conquered by the Assyri Assyrians. So you have the Syrians, and then you have the Assyrians. Uh, the Assyrians were very nasty, nasty guys, and um, they were brutal fighters, and they, it's exactly what, what he says. He shall come up over every ravine of yours and walk over all your walls and take away from Judah every man able to raise his head or accomplish anything. His encampment will fill the breath of your land, O oh God, with us. So notice that he's speaking to the child of Isaiah. He's also speaking to the child who would come. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. That he's speaking to Jesus that the Gentiles would come up over the breadth of the entire land of Israel and Judah. Because notice that he says Judah there. Know this, O Gentiles, and be defeated. Give ear, all you, to the very ends of the earth. This goes to the scope of all things. It reaches out to now. And we go back to Psalm 2. Why did the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? And the kings of the earth will be held in derision by God. 
and he will laugh at them. Be defeated, although you are strong. He's saying this to the Assyrians. He's saying this to Israel, Syria, and even Judah, where, where Isaiah is this is is uh, preaching and proclaiming. He's also speaking this to us. Be defeated, although you are strong. For even if you should be strong again, you will be defeated again. Then too, whatever counsel you take, the Lord will scatter it abroad. And whatever words you shall speak, it will not continue among you. For the Lord God is with us. This is something that we now, God's people right now, can take to the bank. It's something that God's people throughout all of human history can take to the bank. No matter how strong a tyrant may become, or how strong a nation shall become, or how strong this group or that group of people shall become, they will be brought to naught. And even though they might become strong again, and we see this all throughout history, the same um, bedraggled, um, dusty, moth-eaten experiments of man, the ones that bring shame, destruction, and misery upon populations of innocent people all throughout history. And the ones that John, the apostle, would call the Antichrist. And that's, that's small a. Those who are against God's anointed, those who stand against God himself and God's people, by extension, whether they be strong and they be strong again, they will be defeated again. And, and we know that Christ is victorious and Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and among those in the tombs bestowing life. And so we have this confidence that no matter what word is spoken against God, it will not continue ever. No matter how strong they may be, no matter how many Jews they kill, no matter how many Christians they kill, no matter how much they rail against God and his people and his kingdom and the church, the Lord God is with us. And it will always be brought to naught. Now, I did the question for today's um, readings from something that <laughs> it's taken from a diviner, basically. Then they who seal the law so as not to learn it themselves shall be evident. We found this in Jesus' day. They, they sealed the law, so they, they made the law their thing, but they didn't learn it themselves. They um, continued to be disobedient in their hearts, just as Israel was back in these days. But one will say, I shall wait for God who turned his face away from the house of Jacob, and I will trust in him. Behold, I and the children God gave me. So who's this one that's going to say, I will wait for God? who turned his face away from the house of Jacob, and I will trust in him. Who is this one? It's you. It's me. It's every blood-bought child of God, every follower of Jesus, every disciple. From even those days when you know, the name of Jesus was not yet known, but they knew of Emmanuel at this point, God with us, and they knew a child would be born, a son given, but still it was veiled in mystery. And yet, I shall wait for God from that time for, forward until now, this very day, all over the planet. We are waiting for God. And we will trust in Him, us and our children that God gave us. 
it, it echoes um, Joshua's statement at the end of his life. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And this is what we got to be. And this is what we got to do. And he, he continues on saying, this will be for signs and wonders in the house of Israel. From the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. The signs and wonders which came from Jesus. The signs and wonders which came from the apostles. The signs and wonders which continue to this day. Because miracles still do happen. Don't, don't listen to doubters and people who don't believe that, that a miracle can happen today. Because they do. And, and we will be a sign and a wonder in the house of Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion, the heavenly Zion. So if they, now they are those who are false prophets, should say to you, seek those who call from the earth and are ventriloquist, who speak from the belly. Should not a nation seek their God? So he's saying to these false men and women, who they're seeking after basically false prophets, shouldn't the nation seek their God? And so that's my question to you all, and for myself as well, because I, I know I had a, a down day. It ended well. But these are trying times, and they are very rough to go through. But when you look at the promises of God in his scriptures, and you hear these words, should not a nation seek their God? Now, I'm not saying America or Britain or Rwanda or China, although that would be nice. You know, Peter says later in his epistle, that you are a holy nation. And Paul says that we have a citizenship in heaven. And so I say, echoing these words, should not God's nations seek after God? We are a nation without borders. We are a nation without language. We are a nation even without our unique culture because... Um, we, we spread all over the earth, all over the earth. And yet we do have a border. It's, it's nearly infinite. It's heaven. And we do have a language, and that's the language of heaven. And the, 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 in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. That's the language of heaven. Jesus is the language of heaven. And our culture, our culture is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. And thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so we do have a border. We do have a language. We do have a culture. But it's not of this world. This world is not our home. We're just passing through, as Larry Norman once said. And it's so true. And it says that he gave the law to help them. And that's what he does to us. He gives us his word to help us. So take, take comfort in these words during these trying times. Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I... Dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who shows to them that are in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness, grant unto us all the who, those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may avoid those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them. 
thy saving health unto all nations, more especially we pray for thy holy Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially for Laura, Jeff, Pam, Jeannie, Caden, Eric, Amy, Joe, Clyde, Dory, Josiah, Paul, Joy, Wanda, Sonia, Wayne, George, Owen, Graham, Cheryl, Kim, Roman, Mitch, Jerry, Matt, Lindsay, Carrie, and Jill, and her unborn children, Rebecca, Simeon, Adam, Brian, Henry, Hank, Olivia, Stephen, Paul, Doug, Howard, Isaac, Scott, Peggy, Glenn, Carol, Donna, Rush, Jared, Daniel, Rachel, Natalie, James, Julia, Eileen, Chloe, Doris, Andrew, Ulrich, Lauren, Heather, Ray, Mary Elizabeth, Anne, Hugh, Tina, Fred, Jackie, Nathan, Barry, Tony, Denise, Mark, Lou, and all those suffering worldwide with the coronavirus, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And may the souls of the faithful departed through thy mercy find rest in your peace. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And remain with us always and with our absent brothers and sisters. So tonight we're going to continue on. We're still in the prologue. Now you notice, look how thin this book is. This, this rule of St. Benedict is very thin. Um. And we're really cutting this up really tiny and taking it in slowly so that we can understand where is St. Benedict coming from? Where is the church in the hallway coming from more specifically? And he brings up more scripture. And he says, having our loins girded, therefore, with faith in the performance of good works, let us walk in his paths by the guidance of the gospel, that we may deserve to see him who has called us to his kingdom. For if we wish to dwell in the tent of that kingdom, we must run to it by good deeds or we shall never reach it. But let us ask the Lord with the prophet, Lord, who shall dwell in your tent or who shall rest upon your holy mountain? After this question, brethren, let us listen to the Lord as he answers and shows us the way to that tent, saying, He who walks without stain and practices justice, he who speaks from his truth from his heart, he who has not used his tongue for deceit, he who has done no evil to his neighbor, he who has given no place to slander against his neighbor, it is he who, under any temptation from the malicious devil, has brought him to naught by casting him in his temptation from the sight of his heart, and who has laid hold of his thoughts while they were still young and dashed them against Christ. <laughs> it's interesting that we read this because in Isaiah, and I still got it opened up here, you know, he brings out this very thing that, let's see if I can find it real quick. Remember how Jesus said that I will be a stumbling block to the Gentiles. And basically, oh, stumbling stone. Here we go. 8, 11 through 15. He says this. With a strong hand, they rebel against the course of the way of this people, saying that you should not say it is hard. For, for whatever this people say is, is hard, but do not be afraid of their terror, nor be troubled. Sanctify the Lord himself, and he shall be your fear. Echoing Peter's statement, set up, sanctify the Lord your guide in your heart. So if you trust in him, he shall be as a sanctuary for you, and you shall not come against him as a stumbling stone or as a rock of disaster. In other words, 
Jesus won't crush you. He will crush those who will not follow. And, you know, it, there again, he's the rock. You know, we've all heard this. This is Petra, the band, you know. And Jesus is the rock upon which the church is built. And on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. No, All other ground is sinking stand. But Jesus himself said that there are those who will be crushed by this rock and their unbelief. And I think that's where he's going. St. Benedict is going with this. That who has laid hold of his thoughts, the man who has laid hold of his thoughts while they were still young and dashed his thoughts against Christ, not himself. So the temptations that come and the things that lead us astray, we need to dash against the rock of our salvation by faith. It is they who, fearing the Lord, do not pride themselves on their good observance. This is key. We don't have, you know, because you fast and you pray, whoopie do. Um, where's your heart at? And just because you have a good observance, you go to church every Sunday and you give and you do this and you do that and you do the other thing. But do you fear the Lord? It is they who, fearing the Lord, do not pride themselves in their good observance, but convinced that the good which is in them cannot come from themselves and must be from the Lord. Instead, glorify the Lord's work in them, using the words of the prophet, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. Thus also the Apostle Paul attributed nothing of the success of his preaching to himself, but said, by the grace of God, I am that I am. I am what I am. And again, he says, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Hence, the Lord says in the gospel, whoever listens to these words of mine and acts upon them, I will liken him to a wise man that built his house on the rock. The floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. If we stand on the rock, we are saved. But if the rock falls on us, we're going to hell. Having given us these assurances, the Lord is waiting every day. Listen to this. The Lord is waiting every day for us to respond by our deeds to his holy admonitions. And, and listen, I know some Protestants may go, what do you mean by your deeds? The deeds of faith. You gotta you gotta look between the stitches on this fastball here. This is a thousand years before the Reformation, and all of the arguments that happened then aren't happening at this point. At the point of this writing, there's one church. There's no other church. There's just one church. Not even east and west are separated at this point. And you need to be able to read this with the eyes of the fathers of the church and not with Protestant eyes or the eyes of your own denomination, which came 1, 1,500 years later. Um, start looking with the eyes of one church where the divisions aren't so um, terrible or terrifying. Yeah, there's divisions, but there's not nothing like we have now. And it, when we respond by our deeds to his holy admonitions, we're responding in faith, faith working through love. And the days of, the, and it continues, and the days of this life are lengthened and a truce granted for us this very, for this very reason, that we may amend our evil ways. As the apostle says, do you not know that God's patience is inviting you to repent? For the merciful Lord tells us, I desire not the death of a sinner, but has she, that he should be converted and live. And I'll end as we began, because this goes right back to the, our, the ending of our reading in Isaiah. Because for all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand of mercy, I'll add that. I'm not adding to the text. I'm just adding it for my own 
his hand is still uplifted. He does not desire the death of a sinner, but he should be converted and live. And so that's the call to you and I to turn from our sins, to actually take seriously the call of God, take seriously the holiness of God, the demands of his law, that we can never obey his law. We could walk the whole earth for the rest of our lives until our feet are bloody and our shoes are worn in hopes of trying to earn life, life eternal, and it would all be nothing. It all be worthless. We need to turn to him who is life because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And he's the one who is the conqueror. He is the one who's victorious. And so it is to the risen Savior. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And he's here right now. And he's calling to us to follow him. And so tonight, till tomorrow night, I encourage you to follow Jesus.